Hello. In the last class we had a look at the concept of a cut set. So a cut set is basically a set of edges that if they are removed it will divide a graph into multiple components. We can consider all these examples as valid cut sets. So the same concept uh, extended in such a way that instead of the edges we consider vertices such that if those vertices are removed then the graph is going to be divided into two components so so vertices which which can divide a graph into two components uh, they are represented as a cut vertex so for example uh, if we take the case of the vertex e over here uh, if we remove it and of course the removal will imply that all the incident edges associated with that vertex they also have to be removed so we can see that the graph is divided into two components now this was actually quite easy uh, in a graph like this the reason being that we could identify a weak point in the graph and that weak point is represented by the vertex e we can also identify other cut vertices so for example if we if we consider the case of a d and c that will also comprise of a valid cut vertex okay so we'll come more uh, come about more of this later on uh, the idea is that if we take a graph in which it's difficult to identify a weak point so take the case, case of k4 over here we we, we can see that it's so well connected that we may not be able to identify any cut vertex in this graph at all. But if it is identifiable, so looking at this, this graph, G, we can maybe identify the cut vertex 1 as E and the cut vertex 2 as A, D, C. And in association to this cut vertex, we can identify another set of objects. So it will it will represent all the edges which are going to be removed. We have AE, DE, uh, CE, and we have EF. So this this set is known as a cut vertex, and this set is known as a cut edge. So if we take the case of ADC, the associated edges which are going to be removed, let me highlight it in red. So with A, we are going to remove these edges. With uh, D, we are going to remove these edges. With C, we are going to remove these edges. So, so basically, this entire part is going to be uh, removed with respect to uh, the uh, cut vertex. And what we are going to be left with is simply the vertex B and the uh, path EF. So now that we have looked at what um, cut vertex is represented as, we need to be able to identify it correctly. And for this, we need to look at some properties of cut vertices. So the first property we are going to look at is given in theorem 27. So here we have two vertices V1 and V2. We can, we can identify them uh, using these graphical this graphical representation and supposing that from v1 to v2 we have a number of paths such that each of those paths are passing through v3 so if that that eventuality occurs then we can say that v3 is a valid cut vertex and we can extend this so for example we can introduce some more vertices let us bring in v4 uh, v5 and they are connected with each other in this manner so the idea is that if we take any i j pair where j ends at v2 so we may have the pair starting from v1 to v2 it passes through v3 if we take the case and we have to represent it as d v1 and v2 so it must go to the shorter short, through the shortest path we can take the case of v4 to v2 and in this case v4 to v2 is the distance is 3 and it will pass through the vertex v3 we can take the case of v5 to v2 so although um, it's uh, passing through v3 we can notice that it's going to be actually this direction in which it is flowing so in all of these cases we may have a common vertex 
v3 along each of the pathways and of course this this vertex v3 is going to be our cut vertex so this is my cut vertex and the removal of this cut vertex will will result in the graph being disconnected into two components we can represent this working with the help of an example so so let me move this aside we will not be needing this any further so for the algorithm let's suppose that we have uh, the concept of um, a method called connected g so if we call this method it has to return to us the connected components of a graph of a graph so if it is a single graph it should return one if it is uh, the the connected components are two it should return two and so on and so forth okay so this this basically returns us the connected components in a graph the idea is that we can define a max value max is equal to one and we can identify a loop going across a power set so we have a an iterator i for i in power set of g so we can we can take the case of this graph we we can take the graph uh, with the vertices a b c and d and the power set of this graph is going to be actually the set um, null a b c d followed by a b AC, AD, we can have BC, BD, followed by ABC, ABD, ACD, what is left out? We have BCD and we have ABCD. So this should be total of 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Have we left something out? Ah, yes. So, CD is left out. So, the, so the, basically the power set is of size 2 raised to power n. So, normally we exclude the null. So, we can take the case of 2n minus 1. So, this power set is going to iterate across each of these members in the set. And for each i identified, we have to check if the removal of this component i from the graph g is going to result us in a different value so for example we can take the case of is if if connected g subtract i if this is larger than the maximum value if this is larger than the maximum value then in that case we can update the maximum value to whatever has been retrieved over here so we can actually store this in a temporary value just so that we don't need to call this again and we can also do a print of this print of i so the loop is finished in this manner and what this will do we can we can represent that with the help of uh, this this state space so we can we can go through what what happens to this graph let me remove this because this is already reproduced okay so if we take the case of i is equal to a its removal would imply that the graph is divided into two components so we can basically write two in the case of b the removal is going to not make any effect same goes for c same goes for d so in all of these cases we have one one and one if you remove a b this is also going to reduce the graph into two components so we can write two for a b but the removal for a c a d b c it's still going to be one component so we have one one and one over here for BD, we can see that it's still going to be the same one component. So we have one, we have CD straight one.
for the removal of ABC, ABD, ACD, we have one in these cases also. Likewise for BCD and in the case of ABCD, we have actually zero components. So you can notice that we have identified two candidate cut vertices. The first is A and the second is AB. Now recall that in the case of fundamental cut sets, we had a condition that if a cut set is a subset of a larger cut set, so if you we, if we, if we, if we have a condition like A is a subset of B, if this is the case, then B is not a valid cut set. The same case applies over here. So we can say that A is a subset of the set AB. And since both of them are dividing the graph into two components, this is not a valid cut vertex. So we are left with A as the only answer. Now keep a note um, of the complexity of this problem. So the, it depends upon the, the number of iterations and the, uh, the, the response of the function connected g of i. So as far as the iterations are concerned, since the power set is of a size of 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of vertices, so we can write 2 to the power of n. And the, the, the response of the connected function, so the way to do that, the way to count the number of connected components is to use um, to, uh, it to use either of the breadth first search or the depth first search approach, which which gives us a complexity of n plus m. So we can we can write this as into uh, n plus m. And asymptotically speaking, we can just consider the dominant term to be n just for argument's sake. So we can we can simplify this to o two to the n of n. So we have an exponential behavior in this in this in the running of this algorithm, but this does not mean that we have to wait for the entire period of time. We can apply a heuristic. So the heuristic we can apply is basically sorting the power set with respect to size. So it's if you have a look over here, it's already sorted with respect to size, where the smallest size is of length of one and the largest size is of length four. Okay, so, so if we are able to do it, we can actually plug in a return statement in the body of this if condition such that if it is able to find out a single vertex or the smallest set of vertices which divides the graph into two components, we don't need to run any further iterations. So, so, so once we find out this, we need, don't need to run this, this, this or this. It's the smallest value and the smallest value is fine to be accepted as an answer. So the next property we are going to look at is actually looking at two metrics that will quantify to us the robustness or for that matter the weakness of a graph. And this will of course be from the perspective of topology of the graph or you can say the connectivity. So the metrics are edge connectivity and vertex connectivity. So the edge connectivity refers to the number of vertices in the smallest cut set. So in this case we know that the among the many different cut sets, the smallest cut set is the edge k. So in this case we can say that the edge connectivity is equal to 1. But if you take the case of a graph like this, we can notice that it's a little bit difficult to identify the smallest cut set. So, so we can we can take the case of two, two, we can take the case of one, two, three, four, and okay. So, so amongst all of the different cut sets, we can notice that the smallest size is of either this two over here or this two over here. So in this case, we can say that the edge connectivity is equal to two. But you should remember that while in this case we had a singular answer, in this case we had uh, multiple cut sets of size two which exist in the graph. 
So likewise, if we take the case of the vertex connectivity, so in that case, we can identify the many different cut vertices. So if you recall, we had identified either uh, this vertex which is uh, going to divide the graph into two parts or we could identify uh, these sets of vertices. So of course if you enumerate the quantity of uh, uh, all these graphs we can see that this is the candidate. So in this case we can say that the vertex connectivity of this graph is also equal to 1. And over here if, we, if, you, if you identify the cut vertices so so all these pairs this is one possibility we can also have this as a possibility so you can see that the minimum number of vertices which are going to divide the graph into two is also going to be equal to two so please note that not every uh, vertex of size two is going to divide the graph so if we take the case of these two vertices the graph is still connected as a singular entity from this we can conclude that if the edge connectivity or the vertex connectivity if they approach one we have a weakly connected graph but if if these two quantities so so we have a weak connection over here but if these two quantities ec and vc they approach if they approach a larger quantity, let's suppose the total number of edges or the total number of uh, vertices, okay, so if it approaches the total number of edges in the case of EC and the total number of vertices in the case of VC, so if either of these cases are there, then we have a strongly connected graph. We do see that there is some relationship of these quantities with respect to the minimum degree. So in the case of the edge connectivity, we can basically write that the edge connectivity of a graph G, that's going to be less than equal to the minimum degree of any vertex inside that graph. The next theorem implies that the vertex connectivity of a graph is actually less than the edge connectivity of a graph. What this means is that if you consider that a cut set alpha um, divides a graph into two components, so let those two components be A and B. And the cut set alpha supposing the, the it, it comprises of only one edge. So it's incident upon two vertices V1 and V2. Now, if we are going to remove alpha, the graph is divided into two components. But if you were to extend this concept, then our candidates are V1 and V2. So you, you can notice that we don't need to remove both of these vertices. In fact, if we remove just one of them, the removal of one vertex would imply that the associated cut edge is also going to be removed and this can be preserved so so in that sense we can we can basically say that this is a lower bound for our edge connectivity and we can therefore say that the vertex connectivity should be actually less than the edge connectivity in fact um, less than or equal to because other, otherwise we can say that if if we take the case of v1 and the removal of V1 divides the graph into two components. This is still a subset of V1 and V2. So removal of V1 and V2 also divides the subgraph, uh, the graph into two components. But we are not going to take this because this does the job. So the next property basically says that the that the maximum vertex connectivity. Okay, so this is actually the integer part of the relation to e minus 2e divided by n so basically the maximum vertex connectivity of a graph is equal to the integer part so we can take the floor of this expression 2e by n so this is going to be giving us the maximum vertex connectivity and where does this come from so you may recall let me move this over here so, so you may recall that the total degree of a graph 
so uh, so the total degree of a graph uh, comprising of n vertices that is equal to twice the number of edges so basically for each edge it is contributing to two degrees in the graph so so this is the representation now we can construct a notion of an average degree in the sense that if you if we take the average degree we have to divide it by the total number of vertices and likewise we have to multi divide it on both sides so we will have this expression 2e divided by n so we can consider this to be the upper bound of the edge connectivity uh, and we can we can actually represent it in this expression so so basically we have the vertex connectivity less than the edge connectivity and the edge connectivity is less than this expression and of course we can take the case of edge connectivity x is equal to the minimum degree so um, okay this should be equal to so that brings us to the end of this session uh, in the end we can just have a look at a very small application of cut vertex to the concept of isomorphism so recall that in the case of isomorphism uh, we take two graphs g1 and g2 and we say that these two are isomorphic to one another if the vertices of g1 and the vertices of g2 they have a bijection between them so in a way you can say a one to one relationship with respect to its properties now what would happen if two graphs are not isomorphic but the the differences between both of the graphs are very subtle and very very minor so in that case we can refer to the concept of k isomorphism so as an example we can take the case of one isomorphic so here we have g1 and here we have g2 now g1 and g2 are not isomorphic okay but what they can be is one isomorphic considering the property that if we identify the cut vertex a in both g1 and g2 and we apply a splitting procedure so remember a cut, vert cut vertex divides a graph into two components but in this case we are not removing the vertex we are actually splitting it into two parts this and this so as a result we can take the case of g1 a and g1 b and g2 a and g2 b on the basis of that cut vertex what we can see is that the graphs are similar to one another the graphs are isomorphic to one another on the basis of a single cut vertex now we can take the case of the uh, uh, two isomorphism by taking into account graph g3 and g4 again g3 and g4 are not isomorphic to one another simply because we have uh, the the degree of the uh, the largest degree in both of these cases is different so we can basically identify and and also note that this there's the, the cut vertex of uh, the vertex connectivity of either g3 and g4 is not one but two so if we identify those cut vertices and we perform a split operation we are going to get with g3 a and g3 uh, okay we have g3 a and g3 b and we have g4 a and g4 b so in this case we can notice that in the initial graph it was not isomorphic but in this case we can say that both of them are having two isomorphism with one another so this is just a small topic i just wanted to go through quickly um, we can finish over here and see you later in the next class